I, I need to find some solution to this, otherwise we're just going to continue to have problems. And I don't want this for the next 10 years. I don't want this for myself. I don't want it for my business. I don't want it for my family when I go home at night. I really want to be able to find a solution for this. Welcome to our podcast, where Cornet, Tim and JP discuss the importance on focusing on the who and not the how. Today, we'll be exploring on how this approach can lead to a more effective and fulfilling way of growing your building business. Tim, big thank you for coming in today. Cornet and I have been chatting a bit about this leading up to it. Uh, very exciting. And we'll jump into everything very soon. But just everything that you've been doing, the experience that you bring and what, how you're helping guys in the industry, I think is very unique and very necessary. So thank cool. you very much for coming on and chatting with us. No worries at all. I love having out, hanging out with you guys. Um, <laughs> it's like a team of brothers now. Yeah. I think we've done a fair bit of work together between business and friends and you know some of the seminars and things that we've all been to. Mm. Um, and I think this is probably long overdue to try and help the industry the way that we can. So yeah. you know, if I can provide some experience and leverage by doing that, then you know, I'd love to be able to help. So yeah. happy to be here, happy to talk about my journey, my experience and what I can bring to, um, bring to the industry. Yeah, awesome, mate. So, um, yeah, you, you gave me a call uh, probably like a month or so ago and we got talking and I got really excited in like what you were talking to me about. Yeah. I mean, obviously you've been a builder for how long now? Uh, I've been in the industry for nearly 17 years. Yeah. Um, the business that I work for has been in the industry for nearly 31 now. Yeah. So, and I, I think obviously we're working with a lot of builders. So what we spoke about on the phone there was super relevant. Yeah. And I guess that's what we're going to explore today in yep. this podcast. Working with a lot of builders, that we see so many problems. There's so many problems um, in the whole industry. Yep. That's one thing I'm passionate about is uplifting the industry. We're working with other people like Kurt, the builder coach, yep. uplifting the industry. A lot of our clients, they want to uplift the industry. Yep. And that's exactly what you want to do as well. And that's what I love about it. What do you find? What, what, what are the biggest problems builders are uh, um, from what I'm hearing in the industry, you know, I think there are so many elements to being involved in a, in a construction company or being a builder. Um, facets like staffing, um, profit, understanding your business workflow, um, understand you know cash cash flow, work in, work out. Um, looking at other elements, occupational health and safety. Um, you know, uh, account keeping, bookkeeping. You know, there's just so many elements, and I think in our industry. Um, a lot of the top builders have come through from um, having a trade. Um, and from what I can see is that a lot of people come from that trade where they're very, very experienced and capable with their hands and their building. Um, and the industry just expects them to understand business straight away. Um, if I look at our, our business journey, it's taken 30 years for us to understand you know, the industry very well and to be able to put some very strong practices in place and be able to understand what a business needs at the scale that we're at. Um, and I think if, it, if, if the industry had to rely on everyone that's starting now to wait 30 years to understand that, you know, there'd be a lot of consumers that are unhappy. Um, there'd be a lot of supply, uh, suppliers that have problems. There'd be a lot of contractors have problems. There'd be a lot of broke builders. Yeah. Um, you know, we've seen the GST and the GFC and COVID and all those sorts of things and had to navigate all of those ways. And by doing that, what it's done is it's improved business for us over that, that expanse. But if I look at the problems that have occurred, a lot of them are, are, are problems that every single person has faced in that industry at, at, at some point, you know, whether it's financial, whether it's um, banking, whether it's staffing, whether it's all of those elements put together to expect someone to get that 100% right on top of that client's expectations is really, really challenging. And when you have a look at things like COVID, there were lots of other businesses and cafes and things like that that obviously went through the troubles. But the construction industry is one of those industries where there's so many elements that are out of your control. You know, we use suppliers that, you know, if their business shuts down, that lets our business down. Um, if you have a contractor that doesn't manage his books well and he falls off the wayside, um, if he decides he wants to go and chase more money, he leaves your business and goes and finds another builder to work for. So you're basically at the beck and call of a lot of other people. So it's a, it's a, a matter of trying to look at all of those elements, break them down into sections, because some builders will probably have three of them that they're fantastic at, but there could be 12 that they're, they're struggling with and they just really need that bit of guidance. So uh, if I look at uh, the industry on a whole, it's an extremely challenging boat to navigate. 
Um, and I think if you're just starting off, you, you know, you really need to do a university degree to understand it. You can't just expect that you're just going to pick it up every day and get better and better and better. Mm. The guys that do, there are a small few that are very, very capable people. Um, there are also people that have come into the industry that are from a man business management background and they tend to do quite well because they turn it into business first and then they work on the construction yeah. element. But a lot of the good guys, the guys that have been fantastic carpenters and builders in their own right that actually turn into a larger construction companies are the ones that probably have the trouble, that are relying on the wife to do the bookkeeping, that are relying on the you know kids on the weekend to help them drop off stuff and pick stuff up. They're a courier, you know, they're a business manager, they're an employee, an employer, they're, mm. you know, all sorts of things within their own business so to expect them to understand all of that very early is, is challenging so um, I think the industry really needs a hell of a lot of guidance and it doesn't just need guidance from a construction point of view but from a consumer's point of view if I look at a lot of the industry bodies we have as builders a lot of them are there to try and educate you and help you but if you get three bad clients it completely ruins your business so yeah. it's about trying to find a way that if you're bringing in your clients making sure that they're educated as well so that if you're doing the right thing and they're doing the right mm -hmm. thing then all of a sudden the industry is a far better place. A lot of these guys like you said coming from a trade background and all of a sudden you're now building a whole house the craft as a it's important yeah but far less than so many other aspects and well it's only just one aspect yeah it really is you know and like and you're risking a lot of the clients um you know money funds life dreams goals that they've come to you and said hey i want to do this mm. and if you've got 50 percent of your business controlled and 50 percent that's just wild mm. and you're hoping you get to the end and can complete this project well especially if you've promised it because it's yeah. a lot of weight on your shoulders when you do it yeah. for one when you do it for five it gets harder and harder and harder so these guys then you know they're losing sleep they're stressed mm. it ruins their home lives as a builder yeah. when really if they had just a little bit of guidance for a little while there'd be a few things that they could work on and focus mm. on and once they get and graph that they can move on to the next stage and yeah. go right now something else that I can learn and you're right you know those those indicators of you know if I go to work every day I get paid if you're a builder it doesn't matter if you turn up to work every day if you do a bad job you just won't be paid yeah that's how it Work. So the industry and the government have spent a lot of time trying to make sure contractors yeah. are paid, but that doesn't necessarily mean Well, you can do a good job, a but if you're not communicating well, I think that's something I've heard as well. Mm. Bad communication can also then it does stop being paid. You know, and your clients then get worried. They heard lots of stories of builders yeah. going broke at the moment and problems occurring. And if you know you don't explain the process and and how you're dealing with things and what you're doing to navigate that process, then they just sitting there tentatively going, "Well, I'm not sure if I want to sign or not. I'm mm. not sure now that I have whether I should stay or whether I should pull the pin. Yeah. Um, you know, how are you going to deal with this? How do I know that you're going to be here in 12 months? And it's not just the 12 months to build the home, but it's the maintenance period for a home and it's the structural warranty for a home and those sorts of things. Yeah. yeah. A lot of builders we work with, um, they tell us their story, how they got started. And it's, it's always very inspiring because now they're sitting here with a business and it's awesome and we're about to help them you know, tell their story and get them out there and so on. But a lot of these builders, they tell us they came from on the tools. They started with a trade. Yeah. What do you find those builders that came through that, that channel or that, that had that journey, what, what's their biggest problem? Well, I, I think... Uh, the business skills side of a business is probably the most important and that seems to be the element that a lot of them are missing when they first start. They understand their practice, they know how to talk to tradespeople, they understand the principles behind actually building a home or renovating those sorts of things but I think the business side of understanding cash flow, profit and loss, work in progress, employment, those sorts of elements which tends to take up majority of your time the house itself can be automated by putting the right systems in place and business can be the same but the struggles that they're going to have is understanding are they making enough money based on their overheads are they able to pay their staff how much money do they need in before they need money back out can they forecast the work that they've got coming up to make sure that they manage their money correctly do they understand how to keep their bookkeeping in check who's doing the bookkeeping is it by someone qualified or is it just by wife because she's trying to help them get through the day um, the other elements are things like having to walk away from doing those business things and to do other things yourself like, you know, do the drop-offs and pick-ups yeah. and quality control and check and discuss the, the agreements with the contractors and things like that. So I think a lot of the guys that are creating some beautiful homes are fantastic within their skill and their craft, but the business element is where they fail, which means we tend to find that some of the good guys drop off early because they just don't understand the way they need to run their business and they just don't have the skills to do it. And by not having the skills, what does that mean to them, the business, the family? Well, it adds stress, uh, it puts tension on home life, reduces sleep, reduces health. 
stops them from being able to function correctly and make better decisions at work, which then implements things like problems at work. Um, you know, you get short with your staff. Every, every small problem becomes a larger problem, um, becomes harder to deal with and hard to see your way out. And most times they have no one else to talk to. Yeah. You know, they don't want to go to Beyond Blue or any of those sorts of places because that would be admitting defeat. Uh, these are hard guys and people yeah. that have been tradies for a long time. That's the last thing they want to do. So um, trying to find a solution really feels like you're in it by yourself. Mm. There's no one that really understands your business. There's no one that's willing to help you out of just, it might be a small problem or even have yeah. a conversation about, you know, what else could they mm. offer? Um, I found our industry uh, associations are good at trying to give you some education if you ask for it yeah. or if you're willing to pay money to, to do a course or to do something in it rather than just, hey, look, I just want to have a half hour chat with somebody mm. every now and then that allows me to unload, find out if I'm doing things correctly. Yeah. So that stress, you know, they tend to take home, makes work life harder, they make poorer decisions and then they end up in a, in a bad situation yeah. in a short period yeah. of time. Yeah. What are some, like, if you think back... And we'll, we'll touch on your story in one second. But if you think back to some of those times where you didn't have the knowledge on a mm -hmm. particular area, especially with the business side of things, yep. like how did that affect your life? Do you have any specific stories? Yeah, I reckon I ran probably 95% anxious majority of the time because you just had no idea where it was coming from. Um, what, that, like being anxious? Like you didn't know yeah. where that was coming no, from? No, as in, you know, like industry problems. You know, they come from everywhere. They come from a tradie that, you know, reckons he's, he, he deserves more money for the job but tells you at the end. You get it from a client that asks for everything and then gets to the end and then doesn't want to pay you for it. Um, you get people that um, have finance and then all of a sudden the finance falls through when you need that job to come through. Um, I have, you know, stages where you hand a house over to a client and what we used to do is just give them the final bill when we handed the house over and they take three and a half months to pay. Then they'd want to come in and they'd want to negotiate that final bill down. And if you're doing that repetitively on 20 or 30 jobs a year, That's you know, your, your cash flow staff, your stress is at a high level. And then same thing, you know, that yeah. keeps compounding and compounding. So then you take it home, then you start to have a few drinks because you think that's the right way out. That makes you tired and then you're cranky the next day. You live on coffee, you know, mm. and it's just a snowball effect. Yeah, so, I mean, and you well, don't know anything different because you yeah. think this is just what the industry does. When I talk to everybody else, everyone's having the same problems. Yeah, everyone's like, I don't know when my next client's coming from. Yeah. You know, if, do I have to undercut the guy next door just so that I can win a job? Um, I've got tradies yelling at me because things aren't ready on time, but that's not my fault. That's because the industry's let me down, or I didn't place an order early enough. You know, so those problems again, they're still happening now. Yeah. But there's no one for anyone just to just to get some some mm. advice from, and that's yeah. what the problems for starts. a lot of the builders I chat to or just general business owners it's lonely at the top you know I think it is um, you know when you're at the top and you're trying to make all those decisions and you don't have the right information you don't have any guidance you don't know where yep. to turn you're just fumbling your way through the dark yeah um, yeah and if you're anxious like that and you explain that that loop that routine that you yeah, just explained it's, sure. it's a negative feedback loop of course it is and I think mm. if someone's in that negative feedback loop you just don't know how how you get out of it. No, you don't. And you think, oh, all right, well, maybe I'll go on a holiday. Yeah, it just it doesn't time help. Off. All of a sudden, all it does is every problem that you have has mm, been compounded by worse. a week because you've been away for a week and you come back yeah. to the same problems again. So, you know, this, this, it's just, it's a really, really tough industry for someone that just doesn't have a bit of a business mindset. And when I started, I didn't, you know. Yeah. We'll talk so, about that yeah, let's, in a little I, while. I guess let's go into your story. So how did you get started? So I... And yeah, who are you? What yeah, do you do? Yeah, so, yeah, so Tim Waring, Arden Vale Homes. Yeah. Um, I'm second generation. Um, I started in sales. I worked for Harvey Norman for about 10 or 11 years and just, just loved helping people. So that was your trade? That was my trade, yeah. That was yeah, my yeah. skill set, you know, and I, I did. You know, I wanted to know all about it. I wanted to know how to look after people. I used to do after-hours installation of products to make sure that once I'd sold to the client, I was out there making sure their fridge was installed or their AV gear was set up or their TV was tuned in, you know, those sorts of things. And wow. I looked at the retail industry and thought, this got to be a, a better way to grow it with a family. The last thing I wanted to do is to work boxing day sales and late Thursday nights and those sorts of things and my wife worked in a um, in a family business it was a local construction company in Toowoomba and I decided that um, you know I enjoyed not having to work in retail so I had to talk to her father and he said to me look you know retail is a bit of a pest if you've got a family the construction industry is a fantastic place to be you know you can get weekends off if you if that's the business you want to run and you yeah. can have a Christmas break and you can do some of those sorts of things um, and spend time with your family so They'd recently just put somebody on to look after some of their colour selections and some of their paperwork. And um, one, ga well, one day he rang up and said, look, I just, I'm not interested in that industry. I don't want to come in. 
So he rang me up and said, if you want to come over, the time's now, I've got a spot. And I went, I don't know if I want to work for family. So when was this? This was 96, maybe earlier than yeah. that. Yeah. So, so you've, been do- you've been doing this for a while. It's yeah. not just... No. Well, I didn't really know. Like, I failed shop A and shop B. You know, like, I wasn't, I wasn't, I'm not good with my hands. And I'll admit that now. My wife will admit that. You know, I've hung doors upside down. I've used <laughs> the wrong paints. You know, I'm a bit of a nightmare of a tradesperson. But what I learned to understand is that if I used professionals and people that were very capable within their own role, and they were good carpenters, good bricklayers, good tilers, good painters, good business managers, good accountants, you know, and I carried that ethos the whole way through that we could take something that we'd been doing and just slowly continually improving that, yeah. that element of the business. So and I what, jumped, into, jumped into the construction stuff and I just started with selections. I was helping people with colours, which was what I was good at in a sales role. I'd, I'd make sure they felt comfortable when they made those decisions. Yeah. So I started doing that and then I started to learn a little bit of estimating and I started to manage a little bit of our maintenance on our homes and understand that, that side of it. And I started doing contract paperwork. So I was looking after, you know, um, tilers and bricklayers collecting their paperwork and making sure they understood the job, work through into engineering and, and helping understand what engineering made a difference on on our homes and soil types and, and earthworks and those sorts of things into estimating started working on estimating starting on the little houses the two three hundred thousand dollar jobs and you know I think um, you know 10 15 years ago we were up to doing million and a half dollar unit complexes and stuff like mm. that so there's a lot of work in quoting it and look I made mistakes you know I remember a stage where we we'd done a quote together um, put all the pricing together everything was great um, the guy had taken his quote, come back, said, look, I want to I proceed, but I'm interested in making just a few minor amendments. And um, we made a few minor amendments and recalculated, and it went up 400000 And I went, something's wrong here. You know, like, what, 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 I don't know what's happened. Mm. And I went to, to Hugh, my boss, and said, look, I don't know what we've done here. You know, this thing's gone up nearly half a million dollars. This guy's just going to be livid with us. And he said, you know, we made a mistake. Let's have a look and work out what happened. And all it had been is halfway through when we'd calculated, we'd put a space. There was a space between a zero oh, and it man. hadn't calculated anything below that. Right. And that was the end of it. Hmm. And I said to him, how are we going to tell somebody that we've committed here now to nearly $2 million mm. worth of complex that it's gone up half a million dollars? And he said, we just got to tell him. Because when we, we physically as a business can't do this at mm. that price because it'll send us broke. Would so you? let's have a conversation. Yeah. So we brought him in and we sat him down and we showed him what happened. And he said, well, that's, um, that's unfortunate because I've had valuations done, everything's stacked up, everything's good, and I'm basically ready to sign a contract. And we said, well, we're going to have to see what we can do. So we rang around a few suppliers and said, look, we've made a mistake. We've used your business for a long time. Can you help us out? They said, yep. They all brought it down by a certain element, and we put it all back together. And, you know, he basically said, look, I trust what you've done. You know, you're honest and upfront. I want to make it happen. We made it happen, went through the whole process and got it done. Yeah. So it's just one, that was just one small element. Mm. But I, that's the first time I've had cold sweats. You know, when I've done a quote and those cold sweats have come. So we've learned through making mistakes, having problems and doing those things. And I've come from working at the bottom side of our of our industry doing selections and maintenance and those general sort of items all the way through to having to understand how to manage a business. And, you know, I looked at the business thinking if we turned over so much stock, we just make money. That's, that's just the way to do this. Mm. Um, and when I looked into it further, that's for me, not the way I wanted to understand. I wanted to intimately know our business. So I wanted to go through like I had and like you had by hiring professionals that were fantastic carpenters and bricklayers and painters and tilers and do that for business. I wanted to find people in our industry that could improve my situation from where I stood to where I possibly could be. Because one thing when you can't get back is time. You know, like I could look at that and I could struggle for another 20 years before I learned or I could spend some money now and go, right, I'm going to commit to this. So I started going to some of those seminars and doing those sorts of things. And that's initially where the the mindset came of there are people around to help me. I just didn't look. Was that a hard... I know for some people, uh, because it's a space they've never looked into, they've never tried it. And I know we always talk about, you know, that classic who Mm -hmm. is around you, you know, that you look at your five closest friends and that will dictate who you are. Yes, of course. Um, So some people, based on what they're consuming, when they look at getting help or paying more for a, a specialized service they they can't make sense of it was that hard for you initially yeah to invest I, I, in, I think in the help? thing was that I just I thought we were doing well mm. why, why do we need help mm. you know we're turning over stock you know yeah we're having problems but everyone in the industry has problems is there a better way to do it I'm not sure 
you know, and how do I find someone for one aspect of my business in, in one place? Is there a place that I can go? And I looked at the industry bodies, which, you know, they do offer some very, very good professional guidance, but it's a long-term thing. You do a course, you understand that course could take you three months, and then you get to the next course, that could take more time and more time and more time. So yeah. what I wanted to do then is, is start to look at the industry as a whole and go, where, where are we falling down? because there are people that do have questions that want to get it all in one place and yeah. find a quick solution so that they can move on and make sure that they understand that element of the business. So from my side, I just looked at started using professionals and I started at the bottom thinking this is the right way to do it and I had endless problems. Okay, so you started to invest in getting not just good advice but the best advice in yep. the areas that you saw you were falling short maybe or could yep. learn more. The who, Once, not the how. Yeah, the who, not the how. I know that's a big thing you always oh, yeah, say. Yeah. Um, that's what you're all about. You know, at, what did you start to see change or shift? And, and what that made you think, or well, that epiphany? You had that epiphany. I think the thing is that I was able to set a goal and have someone show me that that goal was achievable. And like a sports player, if someone says, hey, this is the quickest mile that you can do, and all of mm. a sudden you start to cut that down with some professional help, you go, my God, that's achievable. Mm. And then when you hit one, all of a sudden you start to feel like you're on a roll and you start to become a bit invincible. So you go, let's, let, what's the next one? Yeah. You know, is it, is it diet now? If I can run a mile, now, now I need to look after my diet. Now I need a physio and I need to get myself there. And then all of a sudden you're cutting another five to 10 seconds off. So then all of a sudden you start looking for better things. Now you mm. will get to a point where you, f you know you're capable of doing a certain type of work. Yeah. Um, but I found that in our industry, because there's so many elements and that's things like accounting and mm. bookkeeping, occupational health and safety, advertising, marketing, video, you know, there's just so many elements. When I started looking around and I started to look at the better people, the better businesses, the better solutions that were available, I started to use those, just hand over fist completely rotated the business from being a general construction company to a prestige master building company. Like it's, it's a whole nother level of having clients that come to you that just want to work with you, having a long list of clients sitting there, people that don't negotiate your tenders, people that are happy to pay for quotes, mm. people that are happy to work with you, people that get to the end that pay their bill. You know, there's obviously a huge shift from where I used to be, where I used to have all of this anxiety and all this stress on everything that was happening, thinking how are we ever going to get things to improve, to just asking for a little bit of help in the first area that I thought needed attention. Mm -hmm. And the first one that came along was after a seminar we'd gone to. We'd broken the business down with guys like Kurt, and, and he said, you know, where do you fall short? And there were some issues with the staff. That's the first thing we did, went back, had a discussion about that. And it is easy to keep one person because you don't want to break their heart. Yeah. Um, it's easier to keep them than to find somebody else that may be better at their job than them. But we basically had inside troubles that we had to deal with. So we dealt with those and then all of a sudden the business improved. And it was like, wow, that first stage just worked. What else can we do here? Yeah. So then it took me two years before I started to take on more of a chance with the business. I was happy to look at marketing and those sorts of things, but actually shifting the way that we did business took me a little bit longer because we'd been doing the same thing for so yeah. long and it wasn't necessarily just my decision. It was down to you know other people that worked within our industry and my business to say, we don't do that anymore. This is what we did. That took a good two years to change. So just paint a bit of a picture of like, what does Idenvale look like? So for, for a builder that might be watching or listening to this podcast, what does Idenvel look like? Um, so we basically turn over 50 or 60 products a year. Uh, we do a combination now of joint venture construction, uh, new residential construction. Our target market is three hundred to $750,000 residential homes, low set preferably, uh, within our region. You know, I, don't, I try not to target any further outside of my region. That's our, that's, our, that's our profession. That's where we want to be. We've built a team that's specifically designed to cater for that calibre of client as well as that volume of work. Uh, and basically... How many, how, how many team members do you have? 13. Okay. Yeah. I mean, a whole and and they are experienced. So I haven't looked for anyone that just says, hey, you know, for 40 grand a year, I'll do this and this and this. I look for people, same as I did with other elements of the business, I went for the best. So I have guys that are, have their own builder's licenses that work for us and they make my life easier because they make probably 80% of the decisions for me. And by yeah, doing wow. that, I can focus on making sure that we have the volume coming in and we have the right marketing and we have the ability to hire professionals to do the right job because of that scenario. So, so we bring on, we onboard clients, we charge for quotes, we charge about fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars for the initial stage of, of conceptual work and quoting, uh, which we didn't do two years ago. So two or three years ago we were quoting two hundred jobs a year and winning forty five. 
Okay. So we were winning 25% of our work. And in the last two years, I've quoted 65 jobs and won 55 of those. And how much work goes into a quote? How much time, manpower? Um, I've got one person that works for me that helps with quoting that I check over when it's done and it takes us about four hours to knock a quote out. Okay. And before? Um, well, because we had so much going on, if I had six or seven quotes going on at once, I would consistently have one to two people running full time just trying to get work. Yeah. Wow. So that, again, just, just that element of being able to say, I didn't even believe that was achievable. If you'd have told me two, three, four, five years ago, you could have done that. If someone would have told me 10 years ago, that would have been really nice yeah. Um, yeah. because I probably wouldn't have believed them. But I, we, we had to have a mindset shift where we went, we need to find a better way of doing it. I'm sick of putting out fires. I'm sick of the anxiety, sick of the stress. We had a fantastic business model and the quality of our product was great. But the elements behind the business, it had all of us going at any given time. We lost staff over fights and arguments within ourselves, you know, and that's just normal business. That's sometimes what happens. But I looked at it all. And so all of a sudden, after two years, the whole way through COVID, we kept all our staff. I've maintained good relationships with them all. They all make a lot of the executive decisions themselves. We have a meeting once a week to catch up on all of the business we're running. Um, you know, I have someone in my bookkeeping or accounts department really that works five hours, three days a week. And we're pumping out 50 houses to 60 houses a year. Wow. And it's just achievable if you, if you know where to find those solutions. But again, sometimes you've got to have enough problems to go, I need help. Yeah. I, I need to find yeah. some, some solution to this. Otherwise, we're just going to continue to have problems. And I don't want this for the next 10 years. I don't want this for myself. I don't yeah. want it for my business. I don't want it for my family when I go home at night. I really want to be able to find a solution for this. And it's, it's, it's hard to find that solution in one place. It's usually scattered out all over Australia. You know, there's guys like yourselves on the Gold Coast. There's guys like Kurt who are, you know, Sydney, Melbourne sort of based. And, you, you know, all of those elements are, are, are everywhere. And you really want one place to try and find that. Mm. Yeah, and I think there's some builders out there. I mean, you obviously talk to a lot of builders initially when they come to us. Yeah. And they're like, man, you're on the Gold Coast. And they can't even imagine, because mm. they are like location-based, they yep. build for people um, in their location, like what you do. Yeah, You're not yeah. going to go build for someone in Melbourne. No, not at all. That's the building industry. Of course. Unless you have offices there. Mm. But, so they're, um, they're trying to look for, I guess, m creating their team only from a very yes. small circle Yeah, around. very much so. Because that's their, that's their mindset. That's yeah. what they were brought up in, especially if they came through the trade. You, yep. use, you use other trades that are, like, that are here. Yeah. So... And that, that's also a challenge. If you come off the tools, you've already got mates you know. Yeah. So you've got your friend who's a Sparky and your friend who's a Tyler and they're going to help you build this house. But what happens when you have a problem? Mm -hmm. When the electrician doesn't do what he should or the Tyler doesn't, you go from being a mate to now I'm a business owner and you're representing me with a client that I'm building a house for. How do I discipline you? Like, how do I not pay your bill when yeah. I know you're a mate and then I've got to see you at a barbecue on a Sunday? Yeah. So there are elements within your business that you need to look at and decide whether it's the professionalism side of things you want to follow yeah. or whether it's the friendship side of things you want to follow, which is tough. And I, yeah, there's no, I don't think there's any fault to the builder. I mean, we were talking about getting help before. Like, it's hard for us to ask for help. Yeah. I think personally for me, I, I still find it hard to ask for help sometimes, but I... I found it even harder like back in the day. Yes. Especially with business because yep. I wanted to prove that I can do this thing yes, by myself. Yes, of course. Everyone does. Yeah. Everyone wants I'm to like, be the, the look, shining star that made it through and was... Yeah, look, mum, dad, look, I'm yeah, going. I'm, of course. I'm doing this. Mm. Of course. And I think that's the same with a lot of our clients. Yeah. Like, especially before they became clients anyway. I think the thing is as well is that from a family point of view, you know, like if I look at half the anxiety was, was family-based. You know, I was taking over a family business that mm. my mother-in-law worked in, my father-in-law used to own, my sister-in-law worked in, my wife was a part of. You know, if you fail, you fail big time. You know, and is there a backup? You know, you've got to put food on the table for your family. You're raising kids and trying to make sure you're giving them a good education and you've got the family basis behind you. Mm. So mm. I, I, I couldn't fail, you know. Like, my goal behind this was that I had to find professionals because I had no other option, really. Yeah, but did you just go directly to that thought of, like, I've got to get the best people? I do, yeah. Or, or how did you, like, take us back to that time? Like, did you at all struggle? Because, like, like I said before, I struggled with this. Now I'm like, you have to have a mentor all the time. Whenever I don't have a mentor, when I'm like, oh, I'm good for now, I'm going to take a break or whatever, yep. then... I think it, also it you, you've got to recognise that you want the help. You yeah. know, some people are so ingrained in the way that they do things that they just won't ask. They would mm. prefer to fail than have to stand up and embarrass themselves like or make themselves before. look silly. Yeah, like I said before, I wanted to prove that I can do this business thing yeah. by myself. Yeah. 
And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but man, it'll keep you, it'll keep you there. Oh, you well, can't it, it, grow. Yes, that's right. And then you, you again then tend to surround yourself with people that tend to make you feel and good. And validate. Yeah, that. And, and yeah, that, that will back you up and, and make sure that, you know, that's where you go in your life if that's where you really want to go. Mm. Um, and that's, that's part of business, you know. You could have four guys that are just absolutely going gung-ho and two of them that are absolutely hopeless. And you think, well, it's probably just easy to keep everybody because it's easier. Yeah. Whereas if you make an executive decision to shift on the dead weight and you bring in people that are really going to uplift your business with you, the whole, whole new mindset comes in. Yeah. And everyone's on the same page and then business tends to improve. And it was just, again, that was just a small solution to, to moving that. But you've got to, as a business owner, that's a business decision. Yeah. That's so, not so when you've been a carpenter and that's, that's, that's a different decision. So again, going back to that time when you're like, I've got to start getting better people in my business, whether it's team, yeah. Whether it's other professionals, yeah. like mentors, marketing, like all that. Did you have at all anything stopping you? Why didn't you do it earlier? I think we, because our business was second generation, it had been run the same way for so long. So I was just floating in the boat. I wasn't steering the ship. Mm. Um, the business was based on a model that had been built earlier. So technology had changed. Um, things had evolved, um, the capabilities of construction had gone from building small low set little brick veneer houses with roofs on them to, you know, some architectural looking buildings and multi-residential complexes and these sorts of things. So when you, when, you, when you start to have to scale up, you have to start to look for a better way to do things. Otherwise, you physically as a business can't take on any more. So when we started to um, look to be able to go, how do we make things more efficient to be able to do less work, make more money and keep happy staff, you know, we needed to find a different way to doing what we were doing. And because it was a family business and it was second generation, someone that had been so successful for so long to take over from, as I said to you, I wasn't allowed to fail. And that wasn't their um, pressure on me, that was my pressure on me. And some of the anxiety probably came from that, but it also got to a point where I can sit here and dwell on it and if it fails, well then I look like an idiot or I can go and get some help. And if I get some help and it works, I'll keep getting help. If I get some help and it doesn't work, well then I'm no better off. Yeah, you said so, it well before. I mean, what's the risk in trying something that, yes, that of has the chances to exponentially, exponentially, yeah, mm -hmm. change the direction? If you of looked at business. where you wanted to be, and you could go and spend two hours with that person and say, "Show me your life," and you could basically um, dissect their life down and then work on it yourself to get to that same mm -hmm. level, that's what needs to be able to be done for our industry. Because yeah. there are guys that are looking at. Uh, you know, this is where I want to be, but they don't know whether it's a five-year goal or a 10-year goal or a 20-year goal yeah. because it took the other guy 20 years. Yeah, but if yeah. they could sit with him and say, look, you know, I really need some guidance on how I can do that, you could, you could see that that is a far better way of someone trying to get to where they want to be rather than just struggling and having to make the exact mm. same mistakes that that last bloke did. I think that's a big thing for, uh, I know we've talked in the past about this, is a lot of the guys that get maybe they do their trade under someone else yep that's someone else especially the previous generation yep. it took them 20 30 years so that was normal it did and if you did and if and you sometimes i know some of the young guys you, they talk to the old guys and you know the or we or i talk to some of the old guys and they oh that's not a builder you know the guy looking all you know pony boy pretty yeah in, in a suit in running a, suit, a business he's know, not the builder he's no builder he can't actually he can't do it all you know yeah. and that's what a real builder is uh well i know a lot of our builders that are excelling will be like man that is such an old way of thinking and it's going to keep you there. and that guy may be fantastic at his building yeah but may may, may have struggles with occupational health and safety bookkeeping marketing those sorts of elements mm. because he grew up in a different generation so i think trying to find uh, elements for our industry that provide all of those sort of requirements mm. for business and then obviously trying to work out, you know, what's the most important for yeah. that company to be able to bring on board just to make a, a small change. And if that change all of a sudden, you know, in their mind goes, wow, that made a difference. You know, you can, you can see it in people. You know, it's like once you're on a roll, you're on a roll. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you all of a sudden in sport, if you're doing really well and then you get to the quarters and then you get to the semis and then all of a sudden you're in the final, you know, it just seems to keep happening. Mm. You know, your day just seems to get better and it seems to be that way in business, you know. But if you're failing, you then make poor decisions and then you end up with stress, anxiety, depression, those mm. sorts of things. And then all of a sudden no one will help you, but you don't want the help anyway yeah. because you don't want to tell anyone. And, you know, it's a miserable back, back industry. Back into a negative feedback. It is. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not saying the construction industry is the only one that has problems. Mm. But if we look at it and we look at what your business is modelled off, it's about taking 
the element that's unique to that builder and, and blowing it out so mm. everyone can see what's happening. But if that guy is is 98% there but needs some help with this and this and this, well, unless like looking for a video, he goes and finds somebody, then he's going to continue to struggle. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, obviously you invested a lot in all these different areas and all these different people. Yeah. You, it's not just the money investment, not a lot at all. of time. No. Because, I mean, every builder we talk to, the, the one of the biggest things that is stopping them is their thinking of their thought process behind, I don't have any time. Yep. Their relationship with what time means. Yep. So you invested a lot of money, a lot of time, took risk because this boat was going Mm -hmm. and you came in and with other ideas so if you failed it wasn't just you failing your own business there were other people yeah of course Mm -hmm. there was yeah so yeah i mean you've got all that investment so if if i talk to your clients you know and i know promoting your business can be expensive but if you look at the return and you look at all of the people that I've spoken to that have ever used your business, there is not one person that says they wouldn't do it again. Mm. Not one person that says it wasn't worthwhile. Not one person that said to me, it was way too hard. I can't believe that I ever had to, you know, they made me do that, you know? And, and, and that to me is, is a way of proving to people that that sort of solution is available. And once you have it, it's, not, it's basically a return on investment. It's, it's not a cost. It's a, if I knew what you did for my business 10 years ago, I would sell my car to put one of those videos into my business so that I could show my clients what we do because that'll come back to me tenfold. But people don't see that. They just see, oh, that's going to be a bit of time in making a video. I'm not sure if I've got the time, like mm-hmm. you said before. So you make the time if you yeah. have to. Yeah. And I mean, it's the same with if you put fuel in your car. Do you see that as a cost? It's just a living expense. I know. It's just what you've got to do, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but what does that enable you to do? Yeah, true. I mean, you, <laughs> true. You drove from Toowoomba today. Yeah, yeah correct. To come here. Yep. To do this podcast. Yeah. We're getting this message out. Yeah. Hundreds, thousands. I yep. don't know how many people are going to listen to this. Yep. It's going to impact other people's lives. Yeah. So next time you're at the fuel station, are you going to be like, oh man, I don't know if I should fuel up. And that's the same thing. It is. Mm-hmm. It Mo- is. Most accountants will see fuel as... up. Op- it's, a, it's an expense, it's a cost. That's it. Marketing, expense, cost. Yes, of course. Let's cut that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's right. That's the first thing to go, yeah. yeah. But when you look at it, that's the only thing really that you have an opportunity to show people what your business does that's unique. You know, and I probably originally when I looked at, um, you know, how do builders get help is that no one wanted to share information because everyone was worried that they were either going to undercut or someone was going to know your business intimately. And I suppose if I look at my mindset five years ago, we were exactly the same because we were worried about what everyone else was quoting. Was everyone else building the same? What was their final price going to be? How did their clients handle it? What type of construction do they do? Those sorts of things. And if I look at it now, I haven't had one client in two years that's bothered to go and get... They probably, they may have got a second quote, but they definitely didn't go with it. And that is pure advertising, marketing, professionalism, systems, solutions, and then getting to the the, the end and they go, we're happy. Mm. There's the final money. Thank you very much. We love our home. We got it on time. We've paid our bill, you know, and I go, why couldn't we have done this five, 10 years ago? You know, we would have been a completely different business again because we would have taken on the next big challenge. So, so we we are, you know, we've made a lot of uh, decisions to improve the business and focus on that to make sure we're the best that we can be. And it's not just for us, it's for the client, it's for the consumer. You know, if the consumer gets a good experience, they'll keep coming back. But there's a way that if 50% of our industry does it and 50% don't, then all of a sudden the industry still has a lot of problems. Yeah. And, and the one thing is that you can control your business, but you can't generally control the consumer. So what we're trying to obviously overcome is both of those issues at once. Yeah, so talk to us about construction life. Yeah. So the construction life theory really came from, you know, my 16 years of the industry and 33,000 hours of working with customers building their homes, looking at what the customer needed to know to be able to work efficiently with a builder. If I look at the last sort of three to four years of work that we've done on our business by introducing costings to quote, um, introducing systems to make sure that we're understanding what we're quoting and it's accurate, spending more time at the start, signing preliminary agreements with clients, 
making sure they do majority of their selections before they sign to make sure if they want it, it's included in the cost of the home before they go and get finance and taking the time to do things correctly. Um, the principle behind the construction life is to give the consumer a way of entering our industry and understanding what's happening before it happens. Um, I would say that, you know, if you're a builder, you generally don't have a lot of time to quote. Um, and I think that if you're on the tools specifically and you only build five houses a year and you're on site consistently and you've got people ringing, you're looking for a price and a quote, mm. how do you find out if those people are actually going to be a good client? You know, what we wanted to be able to do is provide an industry solution where we're trying to educate the client a certain way and educate the builder a certain way. And when you put them together, they eliminate 80% of the problems that our industry has. Mm -hmm. So what we wanted to be able to do is give them some free resources. So it's a website designed that they can jump on, have a look of working with a builder, working with a designer and trying to find some land. Um, there's a book that's available. If they feel like they want to read, they can also get a hard copy or a digital version of that book. Um, but the tutorial that's available is basically a little little short tutorial that runs over 21 days that breaks down good practice in our industry. It teaches them about looking for a builder specifically for their type of work. Yeah. It talks about signing an agreement and paying for a quote. It talks about why builders have margins on their variations. It talks about some of the work that's involved in selecting some products for your home. It talks in making sure that you're prepared for meetings. So don't turn up to a meeting with a builder when he's time poor and just start going off on a tangent. The aim is to have some dot points for your meetings. We set them up with a folder so that they understand when they turn up that they will get some documents from doing some quotes or doing those sorts of things or tenders with their builder. We set their email up so that they understand the first thing they need to do is start to look at land. They're obviously going to talk to a builder, they may talk to a designer, so break your email into sections. So yeah. the aim of it is just saying to someone, this is what is best practice mm. from a consumer's point of view. This is what you're to expect from a good builder from mm. our industry's point of view. And the aim behind it is that if a builder decides that, hey, you know, oh, I want to send someone off to do this tutorial and understand more about the industry, when they come back, they're educated. And I don't have to sit here for four hours explaining the whole industry and the practice and everything that I need to do. I can just talk to you the way I should talk to someone that's built a couple of homes and we're going to have a, a far better experience because the expectations are completely different. Mm, yeah. um, we basically set it up so there's an affiliate side as well. So the aim of it is that if a builder wants to be involved, that a builder can have a link of their own. They send it to their new potential clients to say, hey, I want you to go and do this first. It's important for me that you understand what you're getting yourself in for before we sort of you jump into a contract track together I'd like you to go and do this the builder does get a small kickback for it the client basically pays to to do the tutorial and the aim is that if they're willing to pay they're willing to commit to go well, I really want to get this done and I want to do it properly mm -hmm. and then when they go back to the builder the builder goes that I know you're pre-qualified mm -hmm. and you understand the process and yeah. it's and it's a lot easier for both of them to get along because they're anticipating they're going to pay for a quote they're yeah. anticipating they're going to pay a margin on variations they're anticipating that they have to sign an agreement at the start they're the anticipating all these things the are going to happen so they're not sitting there blind going I've never built a home before tell yeah. me yeah and the builders going I've got a thousand things I've got to do today the last <laughs> thing I'm going to do is sit here and explain to this to yeah. you for six hours and then you go oh no I don't think I build a house anymore and they walk away and you've lost the potential there. So we're looking to, you know, implement a system that, that benefits the industry from, mm. from a, um, a consumer's point of view because the consumer is used to, hey, let's go out, get nine quotes, yeah. and if my budget's half a million and yeah. most of them are over but one guy's under, I'll go with him. Yeah. I don't know what I'm getting, but the budget seems okay. So all the other guys have basically worked hard and, and come together with a quote, and the quote unfortunately wasn't, wasn't wasn't accepted and they wasted all this time yeah. so there's a far better way of doing it and that's what we're working on um that's one reason why when you started talking to us about construction life and that the solution that that is uh it was like it was like wow thank you <laughs> someone has resonated yeah. yeah because so many of our builders have this uh belief especially when they start um when they first come to us we help them a little bit but there's a lot of gaps there that construction life is going to fill. Yeah. Uh, there's this false belief that um, there's no good clients out there, you know, or I'm getting all these people that I'm talking to and they just keep asking how much. And one thing that we try to educate them on um, and prior to construction life, now we have that to, to put them in front of, but was they're not a bad client. They're just uneducated. Yes, yeah, they and completely. There's no, I mean, I, we always talk about this. Uh, we've been through this a few times getting a mortgage for a buying an investment property oh, yeah. so we bought some investment properties uh, when was it uh, early this year yeah. and um, I've, I've gone through the whole mortgage process before 
but then this investment you know i had to go through it again yeah but even going through it again i didn't know what like there's all these different papers you have to sign it's i'm brand new to it yeah and and, and the and mortgage the, broker just assumes i know everything. Yeah. yeah well the mortgage broker says oh no that's your accountant should do that yeah or the the buyer's agent should do that or the real estate agent should do that and then you talk to the buyer's agent Oh, that's the real agent. Oh, yeah, that's your accountant. Yeah, and, and you and just I get got, pinballed. Yeah, and I got to a stage where I'm like, stuff it. I, this is where my baby, my baby arrived. And it was like three days later, I had to sign all these papers. And I'm just like, I almost told What am wife, I signing? I'm like, let's, let's just leave this thing, stuff it. Yeah. I can't yeah. even think about it now. Yeah. Luckily, we pushed through and now it's been worthwhile. But that's, that's what consumers, are, like, of course, someone yeah. that wants to build a house or renovate a house, yeah. like their home, they don't know. They've only got Instagram to well, go uh, off. So a prime example is in our house, based on what we've done with the construction life, we technically ourselves have the same sort of implemented process. But people will walk through display, 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 mm. just asking questions. They want to sit down. They want to discuss their plans and their big dreams and their project and their budgets and, you know, other bits and pieces where their blocks are and those sorts of things. And they walk in ours and there's no seats. Mm. And they're looking at my staff going, um, can I talk to someone about building? Well, you could. But we need to find out from you first. Yeah. Um, you know, are, are we the right are we the right builder for you? Yeah. So w- straight away, like if, if you're a builder, and you're listening to this. Like what Tim is saying right here, right now, it's not about what you say. It's about having the right system in place. Yeah. It's a solution. Yeah. It's yeah. A, but it's a solution that's suited to your business because if you yeah. don't train your consumer in how good business practice is consulted then they take over yeah mm. they're the ones that come in and dictate to you yeah. well i'm doing this and i want this and in my house i'm having and this is my block and i want something doing this and you yeah. might go we we don't build that sort of house yeah but again you're sitting here thinking hey this is a job i might sit down i might be able to design this guy a house and you know, i'm not sure if i can build it but i'm going to start you know and all of a yeah, sudden you're both you on the on the on the worth yeah. trajectory together if you look at it and say all right well this is the solution we want but i think the thing is that 50 percent of it comes from an uneducated educated consumer yeah. mm. and what we want to do is say to the builder save your time save your efforts have the consumer educate themselves if you want to retain them give them a link and say go and do this we want mm. you to do this because you will be mm. a far better client we will be a far better builder for you it'll only take a short amount of time while that's happening here's our business system here's an advertising on our business when you're done with your course come straight back to us yeah yeah. And then all of a sudden they come back and they go, look, here's all my little downloads. I know what I've got to do. Yep. Mm. So we're going to d- sign an agreement together. Is that right? And how and much better a journey for a quote? is that? And they go, the builder's going, yeah. sorry, what was that? Oh, yes, yes, actually, yes, you are. Yes, yes, that's yeah. right. It's like, I mean, if you, if you get a dog, right, if you get a puppy, <laughs> the puppy's all over the place. Yeah. You're, not, you're not having fun. No. Right? The puppy, it was a good thought at the start, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah. The, the puppy's probably having fun. But if you decide to train your dog... Yes. Now you're both having fun. Yes, you are. And That's it's the same right. with the builder. That's right. If you train your clients. But who has time? No. If we look well, at the industry don't. problems that are occurring, you know, guys have got enough on their back, women have got enough on their back as builders to yeah. say, hey, you know, like I don't have time to do this. You know, if someone comes in and throws me a plan and says, here, price this, I need the work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to take that. Mm-hmm. Well, there's, I mean, I hear a l- of a lot of builders that don't, don't even reply to an inquiry. That yep. They don't even get back to the inquiry. Yep. Yeah. So, yep. they don't have time. So, if you can't even get back to the inquiry, how are you going to train them? That's right. And I think the one reason why builders don't get back to the inquiries is because of time or they blame time. Yeah. But it's because they're scared. Because they're like, oh, all they're going to ask is how much. Yeah. But we also wanted not just to give the consumer a way to understand our industry, but best practice. Yeah. Mm. We want the industry to be able to have a fee to do a quote. Yeah. You know, if you're a professional and you've been working in your business for 10 years and, and, and you want to do the quote properly, you need the time to do it. Why is it good for the, the consumer if, you, if they pay for the quote? Because the builder has skin in the game, right? So if you're not paying for anything, you're not going to get anything back. If you came to me today and said, hey, I want to build a house with you, but I'm not going to give you anything to do it, how much is that house? I'd say it's 300000 is it? Is it not? Does it yeah. matter? We sign a contract and eventually when the costs start coming in, I'll just keep sending variations to you saying it's gone up. And that's why it's the building up. industry has a bad name. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas if the consumer comes and says, hey, look, I'm willing to pay for your time for you to assess this to make sure if it's viable for me and my family because it's my life savings going into this. And you said, that's fine, but I'm a very busy person and mm-hmm. I haven't got time on my weekends. But if you're willing to pay me $1,000 or $1,500 to do a quote, that's viable for me mm-hmm. and I'll make sure I do the job properly. Yeah. You go through and then you sit with the client and say, hey, look, you've paid for this. Mm. So this is, I went to this nth degree to make sure that your quote was accurate. 
client goes, well, thank you very much. And now yeah. the client's already committed to you because they've given you funds. Yeah. So the, con- the consumer then goes back, goes through it all and goes, that guy was really, really good. He yeah. took the time. He did the right thing. Considering we've already given him some money, we want to make some changes. They come back to you and say, hey, we've considered your quote and it's pretty good, but you know, we would like to do this and this and um, you know, hopefully we can sign a contract. Yeah. And that's the end of the process. Um, there's obviously a lot of other steps that you know, things like business coaching and things like that can achieve for you. But the theory behind it is to say that you both have skin in the game because you've paid for something. Mm. So obviously, like this whole paying for quotes, that's one element that you've implemented in your business, and yeah. it's worked amazing. Yeah, it's created a better customer, better business, less anxiety for you, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you've obviously implemented a lot of other things. I mean, we've been working together for um, I don't know how many years now. Three it's or been four awesome, or something, probably. Yeah. 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 And um, but the thing is, it wasn't always like that. Yeah. And I mean, we've started talking about this, and you came to us about this awesome news and you saw this industry kind of like shortfall. Yeah. And yeah, tell us a little bit about what are some of your plans now? Yeah, so um, the elite construction contracting business allows us to work with builders that are struggling in certain areas of their business. I've taken professionals that we've built a long-standing relationship with, guys like yourself and builders, coaches, bookkeepers, uh, website builders, all those sorts of things to look at um, professional elements to be able to help builders through that stage. Um, our business was well and truly secure based on the type of business model that we set up. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to help the guys that are coming off the tools, guys that are you know coming up through the through the industry ranks that are struggling with certain elements of their business, and provide them a professional within the industry that has used other professionals within the industry um, to be able to put together a service that they can rely on, that they can sit in on. You know, it's a half hour every fortnight, and it's just a, a check in. Uh, making sure systems are working, finding out what their professional services are lacking in and make sure they have those elements up to speed and trying to take what it's basically taken us 30 years to achieve to try and get these guys that are doing very, very well in their business themselves but are having a shortfall in some elements and tying that side up to make sure mm-hmm. their industry is mm-hmm. as professional as possible. Yeah. So, Yeah, no, I mean, I, I always, like I mentioned it before, having a mentor is so important. Every time I don't have a mentor, I go backwards. But I think this is awesome because it's that starting point. If, if you're like, if you're a builder and you're just sitting there and you have a particular problem and you just don't know where to go, yep. like that's your starting point. And my aim isn't to provide all of these professional services to these guys. My aim is to direct them into the right path based on the struggles that they're having. Because based on our 30 years and, you know, 2,400 clients, we've had them probably ourselves. And we've found a way to overcome them and improve them and then find a professional that's designed to try and help them. So um, there there is, with modern technology, a, a far better way of doing things. Like you guys, if you look at video, what video was 20 years ago versus what you're capable of doing now, that's basically what's happening in an industry you know there are far better ways to 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 do your bookkeeping and to do your advertising and your marketing and and do those sort of elements um, future proof your business by having websites and and creating you know very very good video creation techniques that bring that client in and make sure Mm. that they're yours so um, I think all of the professionals that we've used that have helped us over the years to be able to provide that to to guys that are needing some assistance is, is a really good business model how can some of these builders that are watching this get in touch with you so we have Instagram, Facebook, and we also have a website. So the website's www.eliteconstructioncontracting.com.au. All the services that we provide are on there. Generally starts with a half hour free session. We just have a sit down and a catch up and discuss business issues and things that they've had. Um, we show all of the elements of, of, of you know, contracting that we do to be able to put them in touch with the right people. Yeah. Um, and then from there, our job is to make sure that it's implemented correctly, that we're not just sending them off to say, hey, here's a good bookkeeper, go and do that, that we're actually working with that bookkeeper and them mm-hmm. to make sure that their staff understand, that the bookkeeper understands, their accountant understands, they understand. Yeah. Once they got a handle of it, they may just you know, jump off or they may say, hey, you know, um, there's another service that I'd like to ask about, you know, how do we do this and how do we do that to, until we can basically get them to a point where they're a really good qualified builder. They've got good systems, good solutions, good marketing. They're happy. They're bringing in money. They're making money. You know, that's the aim. And, and if you get a builder on that side and with the construction life, we can get a consumer doing the same thing, then the industry all of a sudden is just going to nudge yeah. upwards from there. So yeah. that's the Hearing that gets me just really excited for the impact that, like you said, and I love that the shirt you're wearing, you know, is a solution. 
It really? is, yeah. On one sleep. I tried to. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got sort of the, our business, yeah. which means that I'm in the trenches with these guys. I'm not sitting here trying to sell them, you know, uh, big dreams and, yeah. and, you know, heavenly goals. The aim for me is to say that I already do this. I'm in the grind. I'm in the trenches with you. I know how it works. Um, but there is a far better solution, one for the consumer and one for builders that are struggling. Mm. We put them in touch with those professional services and provide an industry solution for consumer and basically for builder. And I think the impact that that's going to have on the industry as a whole is going to be huge. Yeah. Helping the, the consumer and the builder, yep. they're going to have a much better relationship. I know all builders, you know, they call it a marriage. Yep. You know, um, it's going to be a much better marriage. Well, I looked at my analytics for the website so been over a thousand builders have looked at that website in the last 30 days. So there is a lot of trouble in our industry and a lot of people that are looking, but like me, are a little nervous just to go, I'm not sure if I want to take that next step. I'm not sure if I want to ask for help. Yeah. The reason we wanted to provide a free 30 minute session is jump on and ask. If we yeah. can't help you, we'll tell you. Yeah. If we can help you, then we'd love to. No, it's exciting, mate. Thanks for jumping on. Yeah, no, great. Love, love coming down, catching yeah. up with you guys. Always good. Um, professionals should, um, should work together for sure. Awesome. Thank you for tuning into our podcast. If you haven't already, visit bizvideo.com.au forward slash podcast, where you can subscribe for updates to every new podcast episode.